Good evening, Trinidad Tobago. It is Monday, 22nd of May. It is 8.01 and we're live. So we're on and we're connected and we're just waiting to see if anyone joins us. And while the audience builds, I told you all it wasn't a share, it wasn't a save. I woke up this morning to find 10,000 views. I forgot to delete it last night. It was no holes barred. It was dealing with the issue, speaking frank and honestly. But I know and I appreciate that I have an audience that wasn't, it wasn't, we don't do a Sunday night video. It was just a discussion on that and it, it wasn't to be saved, it wasn't to be part of the archives. And for the 500 or so people who shared it, I apologize, but I told you all in the video not to share it. I have to ensure, and I, I am constantly reminded that I have to ensure there are families who use this video, 8 o'clock now, as a television show. And I have to ensure that for the younger heirs and the more impressionable heirs that I do not use any industrial language. And as much as these people as make me want to cuss, I can't cuss. And it also allows the other stations who want to broadcast parts of the show to broadcast. So... Let's put on some ground rules because you know we're doing the call in thing and we deal with guests and stuff. So when you call in, they say this is the this is the guidelines. Keep your contribution concise. Listen to me and not what's coming through whatever device you listen on because there is a delay between what goes into the system and what comes out. So if you're listening to the device to guide you, you'll be a victim of the delay. You yourself do not use any industrial language, please. And let us try, you know what? Let's try to use the forum productively as much as possible, yeah? So... Now, I just have to share it to one more group. We have so many groups and pages that we share this in. So, let's get them up and bubbling. Somebody's telling me something about CNC3 going live or something. I missed that. Um, we were supposed to have an attorney tonight being interviewed live, but unfortunately, she could not make it. I tried to get a fallback attorney. He also is stuck in a meeting until 10 o'clock. Uh, I guess the country busy. 
But I want to say something though, eh? and I want to say this. I don't want to get sidetracked all over the place because I do that. But I want to take a fellow by the name of Johnny Sukaran to task. Johnny Sukaran is the Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago. He's a member of Parliament for San Fernando West. You all know Johnny Sukaran, right? You all know him. He's, he plays a lawyer on TV. His name is Johnny Sukaran, a.k.a. Faris al Rawi. Johnny Sukaran is his name. And Johnny Sukaran, as the government's lead legislator slash attorney, got handed his hat twice on behalf of the government because responsibility and accountability is two sides of the same coin. And when the government of which you are a part gets two injunctions handed to them in one 24-hour period, you must know that you and your entire government are now seen to be running afoul of the very courts of the land and you need to be guided. Johnny Sukaran, Johnny Sukaran, I listened to your response on the television where you, Johnny Sukaran, tried to hide behind Russell Martino and, and Fayad Hussein and Deborah Peak. Johnny, I want to tell you this, Johnny Sukaran, because I'm not calling you Faris Arawi anymore. I don't want to call you by your impersonation. I want to call you by your name. Johnny Sukaran, member of parliament for San Fernando West, Attorney General Trinidad and Tobago. The lawyers that try to convince the court of Trinidad and Tobago that a voluntary act could come with a consequence need to check all of themselves. Because I want to tell you something, Johnny Sukaran, a name, a title, a degree, a position, a, a, a silk, a medal, a plaque, none of those things matter more than character, morality, ethics, integrity, honesty, decency, and Johnny Sukaran. If we could get politicians and public office holders to start to, to, to deal from those positions and not hide behind who, we, who they want us to think they are, because I want to tell you something. Any lawyer that tried to convince this country and any reasonable person paying attention that the Minister of Finance readily believes that there is that the form there was no obligation attached it was totally voluntary but you could be prosecuted if you didn't volunteer and we have senior counsels, Johnny Sukaran. So if I were Russell Martino, Fayad Hussein and Deborah Peak, I'd hand you back your brief. Because you sent me in the court to make a fool of myself. And then you go on the TV and you hide behind me. Because now the nonsense that they're trying to talk, because it's nonsense. You cannot say that a position is voluntary, but if you don't volunteer, we will prosecute you. Am I making any sense? Any sense at all, Johnny? Johnny Sukaran, you got two injunctions from the court this weekend. They stopped you all from breaking down squatters' properties. This government, I want to ask, is any government going to take up the issue of Kiss Baking Company hiding behind the Quelo brand, hiding behind some little poor people and putting them on the side of the road to vend illegally? Is anybody going to do it? Or do I have to find the money to hire an attorney to take every regional corporation and every city corporation and every CEO and chairman and every mayor to court to explain to the nation why the double standard, why the average person cannot sell on the side of the road because they could be moved they could have their stuff taken and thrown in the dustbin like was done to the poor guy around the savannah why why the average person cannot enjoy the same rights and privileges that the chancellor of the university of the west indies the company that he runs why the average person cannot enjoy those same privileges and you have to answer johnny sukaran you as the attorney general because i want to see if i can get a lawyer to uh, to add this to the matter going on in the court about squatting because i've raised the issue there is a massive mall in this country squatting on a highway reserve if you could break down poor people house go and break down the mall there is a massive supermarket in this country part of a multi-million dollar chain sitting illegally squatting on a river reserve if you can break down poor people house johnny sukaran go and break down the grocery and we have to deal Deal with this because Trinidadians walk around Trinidad feeling like nobody looking out for them because the big boys get to move big and the small boys get their crap thrown down that 
cannot be this country. This is Trinidad and Tobago. This is not big shot land. This is not do what you like land. And for as long as there were only two political parties that allowed for people to have no choice but to vote race and not blacks are voting Indian and not Indians are voting black. But when you get into power, you realize that you're, both, you're voting any mini miny more because the same people, the same kiss making company that vending illegally under the UNC, they vending illegally under the PNM. Yeah. So the reason the first song I played is that song Obe is because we the people of Trinidad Tobago we need to take some licks for believing in magic for hoping that we could do some kind of magic that every time we do our nonsense vote somehow magic will happen you know it's like trusting a liar not to eat you because you're not trying to eat him we vote political parties in the power that have demonstrated in the past not new you know it's not that we are unaware they've demonstrated by their own actions in the past what they are capable of we are not surprised by calm Imbert. We are not surprised by Keith or Ricky Rowley. Who was surprised by Marlene McDonald? Come on, when Camille got held with the ninety-three thousand dollars in the brown bag, were you surprised that fertility treatments and weave come back? We are not surprised when things happen by these political parties. Yet we still play any mini mini more. We still believe. We are still so deluded as to believe that we could vote one of these parties into power and magically they will put the nation's interest at, at first. Like, like I, I say all the time, I watch people beat up, rightly, rightly beat up the PNM for looking to spend $60 million to fix a beach that's already there. You're going to, you're going to, um, you're going to renovate some toilets and some shark and bake huts. Each one of those huts I counted have 62 bricks. What is costing $60 million? But you're gonna spend $60 million. So the public in an alarm, in outrage, making noise, rightly so, rightly so, take them to task. But a lot of those same people didn't say anything when Jerry Hadid gave a $200 million contract to a UNC contractor. So where we going, Trinidad and Tobago? Where we going? Or is it okay if the UNC spent $200 million on the same beach, on the same 62 blocks, on the same stupid renovation for a toilet and a shark and bake hut, but if the PNM spent $60 million, we can't make a noise. So now, the PNM could come back into power and pick up Victoria Keys. Hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money spent. More money than could be raised by the property tax. The entire nation was spent on Victoria Keys. And they are actually handing that privately to a private investor financier of both the PNM and the UNC. So neither could make noise. Is why Johnny Sukaran get away with one Alexandra place. Because the nonsense that Johnny Sukaran and his family did with one Alexandra was trumped and followed suit by the UNC as soon as they came into power. So where are we going, Trinidad and Tobago? Where is this magic going to come from? Forget me, you know. Forget me. I wear my orange t-shirt tonight to push it up in their face. But forget me. Don't vote for me, you know. But study ahead because 90% of the people that Keith Rowley put on that stage for you to meet from Shamfa go back was first timers. First timers, you accept them because Keith, because they are dawned, they, they draped in a body, see. And, and, and the same thing with the UNC. When the UNC have their mid-center mall thing and they, ch and they put, bring them out on the stage, they drape them in yellow and you accept them because they're sanitized by the party. But how is that any different to you finding real representation from among yourselves in your constituency and supporting that. How is that different? There are three types of people in this country when elections come around. There are the people who vote PNM, the people who vote UNC, and the people who don't vote at all. Those three people. There are a couple other subsets, but their votes only come into any value if it's real close. But those three people, the people who vote in PNM, they don't care what the PNM do as long as it's the PNM doing it, you know. I had to unfriend a good friend, Simon Dinobrega. But I grew up with a man in Woodbrook house back to back. 
And I love him as a friend, but I had to unfriend him. Because the same Simon de Nobrega, I know him as Sayo, that stood up against the abuses of the UNC and Anil Roberts and UNC Ministry of Sports, have no problem supporting the same nonsense under the PNM and take a little position and take a little board seat and take a little counselor. You cannot, you cannot say to yourself, you certainly can't say it to me, that that it is okay under the PNM, but it's not okay under the UNC. I'm not taking that. And nobody in Trinidad is supposed to take that. Some things were sent to me. Magic and Obey is the name of this video. Some things were sent to me tonight, and I have to share them. But I had put this out, and I know I'm getting vexed. People vex. I have my little friend. She wanted to join up in the party because she loved me. She feeling the energy. Yes, we going. But she thought we was going. To bring the UNC back in power. When she realized that red crap on yellow crap, yellow crap again, the same handful of soul, she does it and she busts it and she calling up my name for her friends. But she seen her own friends telling her, slow your role, friend. We saw you when you were sharing his information and we see you now. We still believe that he is he is on a good thing. So I said on Sunday. Just like the Brian Lara tsunami shelter down the road from it. The Coover Children's Hospital was always a waste of time and money and was built on deception, on lies, and cost the country money it did not have on a fool's errand. As priorities go, what was needed instead and what we could have gotten for the same money was to develop 41 proper constituency-based healthcare facilities complete with 24-hour accident and emergency centers, minor surgery suites, and dedicated ambulance units all built in easy reach of the entire population now i know your gear kicking the yellow and steady crew the gear kicking right there because what god knows the children's hospital slow that we will address that but the reason i advocate for 41 healthcare centers and i say this based on conversations with professionals doctors lawyers doctors surgeons and medical professionals and there's a magic 15 minutes especially for accident and emergency you see when you get in an accident on the uriah butler highway and they grab you and they throw you in an ambulance whenever it reach so it reach a half hour after you call magically because that don't happen in China, Tobago. but let's say it did you've already strayed outside of that 15 minutes magical time but now they have to be side flick that coin do we go straight up the road to mount hope and see if mount hope have current do we go all the way down to san fernando and see the security guard there to open the gate or do we go to port of spain and see if they have beds sheets nurses and doctors what do we do with this person in this trauma 41 health centers with accident and emergency would be set up to deal with statistically based on the amount of accidents and emergencies you would find you would find that normal numbers would tell you that the accidents and emergencies coming out of toko manzanella might most likely tend to be things that have to do with fishing seawater drumming boat hook net that kind of nonsense whereas more of them love until and see lots and the people around besson street nelson street and there they're going to be things like stabbing and gunshots and are not being and not being obtuse and being honest you can tell by the numbers the statistics what is most likely to be happening around this this health center and prepare for it trinidad had one treatment of anti-venom for scorpion sting somebody got stung by a scorpion the other day and the one vial that we had was all the way down in sangre grande because the best place for it to be was sangre grande because the place most likely for a scorpion to bite is in the vicinity of sangre grande so it made sense and that is how you run a country Put in another hospital built in the middle of Trinidad. So now we have the children's hospital and we call it children's. My partner Marlon Rampasad tell me this is built for special operations. Where are all these children that have all these special operations that are going to justify this billion dollars? I want to tell you what a billion dollars is. A billion dollars is a thousand million dollars. A thousand million dollars. It is still worth our while to spend the money on the 10 children every year that need to get sent to Canada or Miami or America or Germany. It's still worth our while than to spend a billion dollars here and to tell me that people are going to come to our hospital as opposed to going to Miami when they come in from Guyana or St. Lucia. You're fooling yourself, but you're not fooling me because the rest of the world knows Trinidad and Tobago. And two quick years after they opened, 
Vancouver Hospital, you will hear. They can't find bandage, they can't find suture, they can't find stretcher, they can't find doctor, the place nasty, they have no water, current gone, somebody teeth the bulb, the door hanging off the hinge, the security guard cosway, the nurse by the counter talking to nobody. That stay same spanking billion dollar facility that's going to need a hundred years to pay itself back by its third year will be in the same catastrophic state as Mount Hope and Port of Spain General Hospital. Why? For the same reason the Tobago Ferry left Trinidad today and had to come back 15 minutes into the journey because we are Trinidadians. The money that is meant to maintain and fix things, we don't spend it on that. We eat it. We eat it. We drive down the road. Our children dressed to the nines our wife draped in jewelry and don't care that the whole world know we thief that money because because if cloth had the kind of money some of my partners pretend cloth had we would a long time have a ministry of cloth but put that aside for a minute because at some point at some point common common sense is going to prevail at some point we're going to end up with people in the parliament who will deal with all of these what three canal call mocking pretenders because when you pull up outside area and your shoe nine feet long and stabbing people in front of you and you spend a hundred thousand dollars for and you're telling your friends, I sit down next to some people today in Panini and I know where their money coming from and they're talking large. I never notice as people get a little richer, the accent is changed because they feel a little more important. That is the curse of ego, trying to validate your existence, trying to take the emptiness of your nothingness that you have inside your head and make you feel like you're better than other people because for a minute you were trusted with other people's property and instead of having ethics and morality and integrity and character, decency and honesty, what you are is a crook and now you're a well-dressed crook and you dress your family nice on crooked money. You're a criminal, a successful criminal at that. You join the Trinidad Tobago Manufacturers Association and the Chamber of Commerce and you hoit hoit and you clink glasses with the rest of the big shot white collar criminals in the country and you feel somehow you've arrived. But all you've arrived at is, an, is a testimony to indecency, to the lack of trustworthiness, to dishonesty, no integrity, the breakdown in society, the lack of morality, the other children in your children's school, their parents know that you're a crook. They know that you're a crook. And you see, the reason I'm talking about these things tonight is because I want, you, I want to finish this. I want to finish this because I asked a question and I want to finish this. So I want to come back to this because I get sidetracked. As priorities go, what was needed instead, what we could have gotten for the same money was to develop 41 proper constituency-based healthcare facilities. Somebody tell me, it's harder to run 41 health centers than one hospital. And you know what? I, I stop cussing people. I turn it over on you leave. Complete with 24-hour accident emergency center. Minor, don't talk to me if you don't think it through. I want to tell you something. I bring one thing to the table besides all the sexiness. I am extremely intelligent. And what I do not know, I research. So if you're not coming to the table with fact, don't bring foolishness near me because I'll take you apart for it. Think beyond the party. Think beyond the texture of your hair. Think beyond the color of your skin or what mommy and tanti and papa tell you. Think country first. Complete with 24-hour accident and emergency centers, minor surgery suites and dedicated ambulance units built in easy reach of the entire population. Now think about that. Think about it that you're in any constituency you're supposed to be 15 minutes from a health center that has accident and emergency casualty and an ambulance. You know why it has an ambulance? A, to fetch you, or B, to shuttle you to another hospital if, if all they do here is stabilize you, stop the bleeding, turn off the artery, restart your heart and send you, dislodge the choking, inject you with the anti anti-venom serum, take the knife out here, cauterize the gunshot wound and send you, if you need bigger surgery, send you there. Yeah? You have a bad accident, 97% of your body broken. Strap you down, fix you, put you in a place where you could breathe and your heart could beat. Send you. That, that's what that ambulance is for. But generally, for, for, for fall down, bus head, small things, small accident, you need a couple stitches, all those kind of things that everybody tries to go to the general hospital for, you now have these health centers for that because they have accident and emergency and it frees up the general hospitals, so that you can fix them up to a standard where they can all offer world-class healthcare at the highest level. 
Yeah? But hospitals are fast ways to steal money, both in construction and operation. We're spending $6.25 billion on health this year to run five hospitals. So quick maths tell you, that's a billion plus per hospital. So this hospital in Coover is not just a billion to build, it's a billion to run. And it may not be a billion to run for the next three months when they know you're watching. But when the nine days pass and all you forget, Rohan Sinanan and the two partners down on the port that have Tobago in this mess that Tobago in. Because Tobago in. you know, all you just forget, all you just forget because they have half price on bears on the avenue this week and the girls' skirts short. So come down and forget yeah yeah that's why this country is how it is because you and me we've believed in magic somebody will come along and do the right kind of obey and fix everything but hospitals are fast ways to steal money both in construction and operation so we spent another billion dollars to build another unnecessary facility yes and to all of those screaming it is for the children tell me how exactly is it for the children other than the word children in the name that the other hospitals properly run cannot also be somebody tell me you need child size mris and they turn off the internet and throw away my computer i say we can't be so stupid we cannot be so stupid there is no such thing as a child size mri stop letting people fool you and make you talk foolishness in public is it so difficult to run a dedicated children's ward in the existing? We spend $6.25 billion to operate the dysfunctional waste of time healthcare system we now have. How is adding another hospital to that supposed to help when we cannot staff and operate those we already have? I am so fed up of the politics of waste and corruption at the top level and of tribal, tribalism and foolishness at the bottom where political leaders could get one side to rally around a cricket star to justify a wasteful billion spent on an unnecessary stadium and another could whip hers into a frenzy defending an equally unnecessary hospital for a strikingly similar cost. You all realize how close the Coover Hospital is to the Brian Lara Stadium two testimonies of why our governments cannot be trusted. Instead of marching and clamoring in defense of pork projects that only seem to serve the interests of the nameless, fames, faceless financier class, and let's face it, eh? the PNM polit the UNC politicians and the PNM politicians, they're going to fix up nice, they're going to like this, they're going to go and pull out young girls in Hyatt. When they're in power, you see the chef, you know. You just have to go to the Hyatt and you see who they're on a Friday. The same girls, you know. The same girls servicing UNC ministers, servicing PNM ministers. Then they're okay. And, and that's what it's for. So they're going to handle and they're going to like themselves. Step out. If they, they're big again. I told you all this Viagra, half Chinat politics, how it is, you know. All them want to like themselves and feel nice. But, but that's not the conversation. But the real money, the billion and that billion, it didn't go in politic, politicians' hands, you know. Politicians are the fools, the facilitators, the enablers, the getaway car drivers, them and the lawyers. And I hear today, Price Waterhouse Coopers get $11.25 million to audit firms. That is the same Price Waterhouse Coopers that the Commission of Inquiry into the failed Clico and CL Financial catastrophe told us was publishing, bought and paid for fiction. The state still owes them $2.4 million for some of this accounting. I wonder whose numbers, who's dictating the dance of the numbers on the bottom line for Price Waterhouse Coopers now? And when will we find out? When? Instead of marching and clamoring in defense of pork projects that only seem to serve the interests of the nameless, faceless financier class, when will the people shake off these two peddlers of political deceit, the PNM and the UNC, and stand up instead and march for a better chance to be able? Tell us, Amaya. I have no problem with Sham for Kujo. I really have no problem with Call Member Chino. I have none, no problem with Rudal Monilal. I didn't have a problem with Glenn Ramadasi. These people are facilitators of a greater problem. The Malays of which they are the tip of the spear, it starts with us. There is a vast majority of people in this country that if given the opportunity would do the same thing. 
And that says something about us more than anything else. And at some point, we have to decide. I could share it and I was told yes I'm not telling you who wrote it before I read it so it can settle because if you know who wrote it it will influence how you think about it it becomes apparent that the last government left to rot in open view the Brian Lara Cricket Stadium hoping to keep as a reminder to the public of the wastage and corruption of the previous PNM administration so petty politics trumped proper governance. Now, I do not agree with everything that is said here because there are things I disagree with and I'll tell you. But I agree with the sentiment of the article, so I'm sharing it. So petty politics trumped proper governance. None of this excuses the ridiculously exorbitant cost of the academy, which the same Unicorn representative said cost just under $1 billion. Apparently, dormitories are yet to be built at the facility and the cost of maintenance will be high, so the expenditure has not ended. The wanton wasting and mismanagement continues. The same petty politics kept the massive Richmond Street campus complex designed to house public offices unused. Now it appears that the PNM in government is resorting to the same base politics with its failure to open the Coover's Children's Hospital. The reality is, like the Brian Lara Stadium, it makes no sense to continue the debate on whether there was any need for a children's hospital when there's already one at Mount Hope, or whether effort instead should have, should have been made to enhance the facility and the pediatric wards around the country, or why the opposition leader, when she was Prime Minister, opened the hospital when it was not operational, or why the PP failed when in office to get the hospital up and running. Notwithstanding all of that, the hospital should still be staffed and open quickly so that the public whose funds were used to build it can access it. Now, this is like saying you've been raped, you've been raped, you've been raped, but the rapist has come back after with a big Mario's pizza with four ingredients and a two liter of cokes. So now all of a sudden it's dinner and a movie. That's what this is trying to say. Because there's no getting away from the fact you cannot say that it costs 10 times what it should have and then say open it anyway. Because you can't say that. You cannot say that. What you have to say is take legal action to recoup the people's money. Put the guilty parties into jail. Prosecute all the entire bandwagon, the whole conspiracy. Jail them all. Seize their assets. Auction their Range Rover, their Mercedes Benz, their wife dress. Auction everything that was purchased with the proceeds of the ill-gotten gains and put it back in the treasury. Yes, then and only then can we be discussing what to do with the facility. But step one is people have jail to make. And that's why we fail as a country because we skip that step. Well, they done rape we and look, they bring our pizza. Oh God, yeah. Sadly, it is likely that the dithering and confusion by the PNM government with the hospital will continue. No doubt, by the time the hospital is open, many more millions will be spent and whatever arrangement will be entered into with an external operator will be mired in controversy and the smoke and the mirrors continue. In an interesting turn of events, the former PNM justice minister who had enjoyed lucrative I don't want to read that. 
Hilariously, the tourism minister says she too was shocked by the bill as she only used just over $1,000 in actual calls and said she had demanded an investigation as to why her bill was so high. To add to the debacle, the minister of finance jumped into the fray, saying that the issue of exorbitant Roman rates in the, roaming rates in the Bahamas was something he intended to raise with CARICOM, no less. You see, and, and the reason I cut out the thing about the justice minister is this person, she still, and as a she, still have issues with the People's Partnership, the UNC in particular. So she goes a little one-sided. But she ends it. She ends it and she says, Who are these people fooling? But then again, as has been pointed out previously, some politicians take us for fools. The Prime Minister describes the controversy over naming a stand at the academy after an Indian cricketer's racial dotishness. Not only was that unbecoming, but no one understands up to now what he was saying. And the opposition leader and her former Minister of Legal Affairs cry out that the property tax is the property tax, with the opposition leader going so far as to urge citizens to tear up the forms, all more smoke and mirrors designed to camouflage the hard, inescapable fact that when in office, the PP did not repeal the PNM's 2009 property tax. It is the PP who is responsible for the property tax still being enforced. They were the government for five years. She is not wrong. And it is the law and it must be obeyed. I disagree. Yes, it is unfair and uncertain and imposes a further financial burden on us, but as the law stands, we have to pay it or face the penalty. Well, when she wrote this, Carl Member did not admit to the court that they really can enforce a penalty on something voluntary. As it turned out, people went out in their hundreds to submit their forms, not because the Minister of Finance claimed anyone is happy to pay the tax, but because we are in the main a law-abiding people who will even tolerate the inconvenience of a hapless government administration in order to do what the law requires of us. I disagree with how she ended it. Michaela, who wrote it, I disagree with what you with the, with the premise and how you tied it up in the end. Trinidadians do not do what the law requires of us. Trinidadians do the laws that you enforce. So if they feel that they could get charged or arrested, or they could lose their property, they will come and fix the business. But other than that, other than that, that's why we don't like the wrecker. The wrecker sticks in our craw. The wrecker works against everything that we know in Trinidad. Because the wrecker, you can't say, hey, you know who I is? That'll work with the wrecker, your car done gone. Or your car bust a little bribe because the wrecker ain't taking that. So, so instead of you getting away and bringing a lawyer and fighting a matter and saying, my car was never really there. Can you describe the color of my car? And how were you feeling on the morning that you gave my client a ticket? Did you write that ticket because you did not like the texture of my client's hair? Did you and my client and his cousin go to school and you all had a fight when you all was three years old? All this nonsense takes place in the court, you know, to get away from people facing up to their responsibility. But when the wrecker come, your car gone. So you have no choice but to go and face up to the responsibility of your crime of your crime and we need to get back to a place where we stop skipping steps if the cabinet approved 136 million dollars to build the Brian Lara Stadium and in the construction it ballooned to 234 million dollars right there is where we need a commissioner of police a director of public prosecutions a commissioner of public works somebody to say hold up selector let's see these numbers because if we've crossed the 136 million it is now for your account but that doesn't happen in the royal imperial majestic banana republic of Trinidad and tobago because this thing went from 136 to 234 to 389 to 455 to 6 and then there's eight and there's a billion at this point like the people who have been trafficked out of the country or the little black hen chicken from lavantel mova beat them and see lots who getting murdered by the pong we don't know how much they we don't know how much missing we don't know how much Farris family really get for one Alexandra place we don't know how much Chandra Sharma spend to outfit the place with the one desk and the two phones we don't know these things we don't know what the Chinese company was paid to build the hospital the same company that built Napa for five times it cost the budgeted price of Napa and be and was the last building built on planet earth with asbestos as some profane, believe it or not, a known carcinogen, there are billions, trillions of dollars set up to pay lawsuits in the states, but we build in a national academy for the performance for performing arts. And the last government shut it down, and this government fixed it back, and nobody tell nobody why.
Nobody tell nobody why. Because it doesn't matter. Because we believe in magic. We believe in obey. We believe that somebody, at some point, we don't have to, t- we don't have to pay attention. We don't have to know. We could just leave it. We could back and all when it's back and all time, yeah? But people calling, and we said we would be taking calls. So, let me get into it. Call now. We're taking it. Yeah? What constituency are you calling from? Good night, good night, Phil. Um, Debbie. Debbie. Have your yeah, seat. Yeah, Franco, yeah. Franco here. Boy, I have two iPhones. I can't get on and none. Sorry about that. That is okay. I, I mean, you know, that stuff does happen. Um, anyway, great job as usual. Even though I can't get on, hopefully I'll get on tomorrow. All right, my friend. I have a few things, um, Phil, I would like to... To put out the, I mean, if you could give me a little time. Sure, don't take too long, though, because everybody uh, else trying to get No, you. no, no. Um, people, we're begging all you, begging all you for help. Here's what I'm willing to do tonight, Phil. For the first hundred people that donate fifty dollars to us, I will match that fifty dollars. Hmm. I want you to people. go and write that on the message thread inside. Tag Ali G, and she will make sure, and Delwood, they will make sure that happen. Yes. That's a fantastic offer. Thanks a lot for that, my friend. Phil, mm-hmm. for the first hundred people, if they put $50, I will, I will double their donation. I will match every $50 for the first hundred people. Here's the second thing I want to get out there, Phil. Um, I'm leaving for New York in a week. People in New York, people in Canada, get your PEP shirts. I will bring it and I will deliver it. I will mail it out to you guys. All right, $25. We will ship it to you too. We'll deliver it. I will put it out. Order your PP shirts, people. Thanks a lot for Call that. Phil, watch up me, text me. I will bring it to you guys. Canada, New York, I come in. Post Please that information in. on the thread. Thanks a lot for that, my friend. Thanks for that fantastic two offers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to cut anybody, but we have limited time and everybody wants to get in. So call 682-2110. Yes? No, we don't business. We don't business. How it is that when people on the phone, people will be calling. I want to share something else. While we're waiting. There are a TV show I used to follow called The Newsroom. Since it's been brought up, You've almost religiously avoided stating or even implying a political allegiance. Stick up in that. Hello, good evening. What constituency are you calling from? Yes, sir. Sorry, Franco. Yeah, I got disconnected. Yeah, Franco. But you got to keep them short, eh? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was pleading with people. Yeah, but Franco, you can do that on the actual... Support. Yeah, but you can do that on the actual trend. But they heard you as a fantastic offer. Appreciate it greatly. Okay? All right, take care. All right, buddy. That because, as a news anchor, you feel the integrity of your broadcast would be compromised. That sounds like a good answer. I'll take it. <laughs> there was a short piece on Vanity. Let's move on to the next question. Go ahead. Hi. Listen My to this. My name is Jenny. I'm a sophomore, and this is for all three of you. Tell me you Can you say in one sentence or less what... <laughs> um, you know what I mean. Can you say... Are you all hearing? America is the greatest country in the world. Diversity and opportunity. Lewis? Uh, freedom and freedom. So let's keep it that way. Charlie, stick a pin in the terrorism attack wherever it happened now. We will deal with that after. We deal with issues here. No, I'm going 
going to hold you to an answer on that. What makes America the greatest country in the world? Listen to his answer. Well, Lewis and Sharon said it. Diversity and opportunity and freedom and freedom. Listen to what he says now. I'm not letting you go back to the airport without answering the question. Sorry about the pause, is in the actual show. But here what he well, says. Our constitution is a masterpiece. James Madison was a genius. The Declaration of Independence is for me the single greatest piece of American writing. You don't look satisfied. One's a set of laws and the other's a deck. Not American the greatest race. country in the world, Professor. That's my answer. You're saying yes. yes. Let's talk about fine. But Sharon, the NEA is a loser. Yeah, it accounts for a penny out of our paycheck, but he gets to hit you with it anytime he wants. It doesn't cost money. Just it costs, phones, it costs air time. How he thinks. How he You know freezes. why people don't like liberals? Because they lose. If liberals are so fucking smart, how come they lose so goddamn always? Hey, and with a straight face, you're gonna tell students that America is so star-spangled awesome that we're the only ones in the world who have freedom? Canada has freedom. Japan has freedom. The UK, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Australia, Belgium. Japan has crime so low right now that the state is looking for other things for their police officers to do. Freedom. 207 sovereign states in the world, like 180 of them have freedom. All right. And yeah, you, uh, sorority girl, just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation period ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Sorry about it, language. Yosemite? We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged war. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged wars on poverty, not poor people. We sacrificed. We cared about our neighbors. We put our money where our mouths were, and we never beat our chest. We built great big things, made ungodly technological advances, explored the universe, cured diseases, and we cultivated the world's greatest artists and the world's greatest economy i share in that not to bash or to build america i'm sharing that to tell you how a citizen must think how you must think about what is done in your name government i will share the link that uh, that was just that was just there i will share it in the thread in a minute but but you must you must decide to stand for something the country cannot get anywhere at all if this continues if it continues like this all that you will be doing is handing a failed state to your inheritors when you are lying on your deathbed wherever that bed is and life is far more difficult than it needs to be thank your prior self who instead of dedicating their vote and their answers and their commitment to country, their responsibility as a citizen in a democracy to ensuring that governments, not for bacchanal sake, governments do what governments do because we let them do it. You think the cabinet meets 
I remember when I raised this issue of the ambulance in the public space. Fuad Khan in a cabinet meeting because three cabinet ministers told me that Fuad Khan said that Gary Griffith only bring that in the cabinet because me and Gary trying to get an ambulance contract. That is the foolishness that passes in this country for confronting and resolving things that are wrong in Trey and Tobago. It is why I have a serious problem dealing with either of those two parties. I see the people, I know the people, I know them all well. And I understand that they sit down and they gather and they think, Trinidadians, we spend $250 million a month picking up garbage. There are people sitting down there trying to find a way to privatize that and to get that contract. They want to privatize water. They want to privatize the sea bridge to Tobago. They want to privatize anything that can guarantee that the treasury pays, not you, the treasury. Because you, they have to wait on, but the treasury, they can bleed dry. The treasury, they can melt. And you, as a citizen, whose money that is, have abdicated your responsibility for Obeah and magic, waiting for somebody else to somehow solve the problem. You're waiting, we're waiting. We're not standing up, we're not standing out. I go and stand up in front of the Prime Minister's office today, not because I have nothing else to do, but to show that that's where you should be too. You, every single one of you, all of you who watch the videos and give me all the talk and all the stories, and all the people who say, it's difficult to give us money. Yes, we need help, but we really have a problem with taking it. And that's very strange. We're not in this to come and be what you've had before. I have no time with people who come in along to try to use this movement as another way just to get into office. I have zero interest in that. We have none. I have none. And I will walk away. I don't care what anybody says. My role and my responsibility. You know, I sleep good at night. I sleep good every night knowing that the tens of thousands of people, men, women, and children that live in Diego Martin, that use, and the people of Woodbrook and St. James by extension, that used to have to deal with a traffic nightmare that started at four roads every evening at half past three and went till seven o'clock at night. So from the time half past three catch you, from movie town and it backs up further and it clogged every side street in Woodbrook and it clogged every side street in St. James and all inside of West Moran's wrongly wronged about and all up in in Mon Coco Road and people trying the endeavor best to bypass four roads and that gave me the idea why don't we build a bypass around four roads and the Jack Warner nobody I never give anybody more stick than I give Jack Warner and give Jack his jacket no pun intended he was the most easy minister to deal with when it came to issues in the public space that was in the public's interest to this day as minister of works i can't think of a reason and a value for jack warner saying to me okay we will build your bypass i can't think of a reason i know the unc contractors get their money but they would get their money for any project it didn't have to be Diego Martin Diego Martin West will never vote UNC I mean they will never it is voter padded to the nth degree we have more powder magazine and 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 ghetto projects in Diego Martin than anywhere else so it could never change them voter banks locked and loaded Balize. so Jack Water and the UNC because at that point in time Jack Water was the minister of everything and he was running the country and when he said yes and he built that, and the UNC built that, and the People's Partnership built that. But I sleep well at night knowing, because that took years out of my life to plan and to execute and to make sure it happened and to lobby the government. And now, thousands of people every single day get home in 15 minutes without paying a mind to it. The only time they notice it is if something happened, like there's an accident, to cause the traffic to back up again, and then they remember what it used to be like every single day. I've done my part. I marched. We organized the Jericho Project, organized year after year after year, a march called Justice for Children March, until the government could not ignore us, until the government had no choice but to, but to make the Children's Bill a law and to set up and fund the Children's Authority. We put 25,000 people in the street. 
and we marched against the People's Partnership government. People ask me, where you come out from? Like you only making noise because people miss me with that. Miss me with that. I make Kamala. It was on the front page of the Guardian. Pull down the billboards. And this is not me beating my chest, but this is for the for the PNM sycophants who seem to think that if they're jamming their party, why, why didn't jam the other party? I jam all. I'm an equal opportunity offender and an army of one. We're doing this long time. We're out there long time dealing with this. We need to get to a place. And I said today, the day Trinidadians, as one people, could say, in Massey, Hilo, True Value, JTA, whatever supermarket you go into, an apple is not worth $9.99. Leave it right there. Let it rot right there. If you go in the store and you're accustomed paying a certain price for a certain item and it goes up, leave it there. That is the start of people power. Economic power. Leave it right there. We need to get to a place in this country where Trinidadians take themselves and each other seriously. Yeah? Well, time ran against us here. I mean, it flew. We gotta get back to a place where we have where we have a vision for the country. Yeah? We're gonna continue to do this as much as we believe that it could help. As much as possible. We'll do it. Every night we'll be here at 8 o'clock. Yeah? Quick housekeeping, those who have not joined, pptrendbego at gmail.com. If you would like to help, contact Dilwood, contact Ali G, Lima, Karen, any of the people on the thread, they out there, Misty. Curtain, before we march for fixed election dates, let's march for recall. If you have the power of recall to fire members of parliament who are not performing, we will start to perform. The first law we need change is the fact that we can't fire the Prime Minister today. We need to be able to fire him. If I could hire you, I must be able to fire you. Yeah? property tax thing tonight they're taking care of it in the court as you're aware I said today that the Minister of Finance is guilty of terrorizing the nation if it is proven in the court that he is correct that there was no obligation to pay the tax then the penalty for paying a tax for which there was no obligation the threat of prosecution is terrorism Terrorism, the textbook definition of terrorism is using threats and fear to coerce action. If you did not have the legal authority to force that action, you tried to terrorize the nation, Mr. Embert. You're a terrorist and you need to be fired. Keith Rowley, you need to fire your Minister of Finance. Yes, to all of you who were here tonight, we will be dealing with the property tax tomorrow because I want to have a lawyer on board to give you the ins and outs and the details of the case that's about to take place. Rudy Paul and, and Reginald McLean and the rest of the team, we're trying to get together to organize this march. We told you we're going to be having a national march. I spoke to people today, members of other political parties, and I told them, we're not marching under party colors. We're marching under the red, white, and black. And we're calling everybody to come together and stand up because regardless of the outcome of the courts, the people of Trent and Tobago need to understand that regardless of what Colm Ember thinks, the people instruct the government. That is what a democracy is. And we must make sure that every government to come understands that the people understand that very, very clear. Yes? So we want a massive turnout and we're dealing with everybody and we're going to start to call that out. If you would like to be a part of any part of the People's of the Progressive Empowerment Party, if you'd like to be part of the People's March Against the Property Tax, send that information at pptrinbago at gmail.com and you will be contacted. Yes, thank all of you who are here tonight and see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Stay safe, Trinbago.